Thank you. So again, I'll welcome you all to our session today, the challenges of implementing SASE and how to plan for those. This session, as I mentioned, is being recorded. All lines are muted. We will have time for questions near the end, but if you have a specific question that you want to make sure we address or a question pops up as we're going through the session, please use the buttons at the bottom of your screen. There is a Q&A button and we'll be monitoring that and look at that at the end of our session. For now, I'd like to introduce our speaker, Mr. Owen O'Donnell. Owen is a product manager here at Viavi with nearly 30 years experience. He's held roles across the spectrum of software design, product management, customer support, and business development. He will share his unique insight with us now and without further ado, I will turn it over to you, Owen. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much, Gloria. And um, welcome all to this um, webinar on best practices for successful SASE implementations. So as Gloria just mentioned there, a couple of words on myself. So um, I'm responsible for marketing strategy and new product introductions in the Viavi Wireless Business Unit. Uh, with a particular emphasis on virtualized 5G radio access and core network testing. And our tool that does that is called TerraVM, which I will be talking about a little bit later on. Um, myself, I've been in the telecoms industry for more than 30 years now. Um, I've held various positions in Ericsson and Huawei, as well as some small cell companies before joining Viavi in test and measurement, where I have been now for the past five years. And I'm based in Dublin in Ireland. So nice to speak to you all. And I'm not sure who's on the call, but hopefully there's a few people I haven't met before and now acquainted with. So today's uh, agenda for this webinar is, is basically um, as shown on screen here. So I'm going to kick off with some words on what is SASE, just to kind of give a high level view as to what the actual technology is. Then a comparison between SASE, which is basically replacing VPN as we know it. A VPN is something that most of us use day to day in our, um, in our work life. And again, I'll explain the reasons why VPN has begun, become a little bit outdated and does require replacement. Then I'll touch on some of the challenges and the bottlenecks in deploying SASE. And you know, these are the reasons why you need to consider test. So that brings us on to why test. Then I'm going to talk about some of the uh, steps. In fact, I'm going to talk about seven steps, um, which we believe are required in order to have a confident SASE launch. Um, I'll go through a couple of um, individual SASE test use cases, just to give you an indication as to type of testing that we would recommend. And also some of the questions which need to be asked by yourselves in industry, whether you're talking to a SASE vendor or a, um, cost, a, a CSP who's deploying a SASE as a service, um, or indeed an IT manager who needs to consider it before it's deployed. At the end then, I'm gonna show you a slide on some additional reading material, which you're free to download and view. And then at the end, we'll take one or two questions before we finish up. So if we kick off then with what is SASE? So SASE is a term which has been coined by Gartner and it was coined in 2019. And coincidentally, that was just before COVID-19 hit. Um, and as a result of COVID-19, we are all now working in a very much different method than we were prior to it. And SASE is actually being used much more now than we thought it would be. But it's not really a new technology. It's more of an integration of technology and terms, which I will describe in a few moments. But the trend towards SASE solutions reflects the reality of an emerging hybrid workforce, which needs to work from anywhere, but still be relatively secure. Now, SASE itself, it delivers security to the user at their location of choice, rather than force their credentials and data checking to a centralized security stack. SASE will provide enterprises with more flexible security. So they will look to migrate workloads to the cloud, um, but increasingly they must manage workforces who demand hybrid work environments or the freedom to work from office or home, or indeed while on the road. 
and cloud transformation and hybrid work models. These both mean that traditional security architectures are no longer effective or efficient. But sticking with the, uh, the kind of the sassy term, so um, you know, enterprises everywhere are transforming their methods of access and security for employees to match new ways of working, new security concerns, and indeed new platforms. The biggest move is away from access and security credentials being rooted to a corporate data center. So from that to a more dynamic model of access anytime and anywhere. The advent of cloud deployed applications and data has accelerated this change. So IT organizations within enterprises, they're faced with this conundrum of providing employees with fast, secure access while ensuring the corporate data and security are not breached, but at the same time ensuring productivity is not hampered by poor latency, throughput and response times. So the solution in vogue for cloud-oriented secure remote access is SASE, which by the way stands for Secure Access Service Edge. Now, the, the SASE market itself is growing very quickly. Um, as you can see from bullet number two on the slide, Gartner have predicted a 41% year-on-year growth, topping $6.8 billion by 2022, which is end of last year. So we're seeing a huge adoption of SASE. And a quote from Gartner also says that as most traffic from branches and edge computing locations will not go to an enterprise data center, then the CIOs and the IT leaders will increasingly use SASE to secure the anytime and anywhere access needs from its users and their devices. However, implementing SASE is not as straightforward and it deserves due consideration to ensure that the corporate security principles are not compromised for the sake of operational efficiency. So this webinar will introduce the concept of SASE, provide an overview of the challenges facing an IT department implementing it, and highlight the test regime needed to ensure a smooth risk-free rollout. So if we take a kind of look at before SASE, um, where most of us, indeed some of us still are, how we would access our HQ or our data center, whether we're dialing in from a branch office or from home or for a cafe or from a remote location. So in the old world, you know, three to four years ago, enterprise remote employees, they used VPN to access corporate files, applications and data. And that way it created a secure tunnel between their computer and the corporate data center where the files they needed were stored. Now this VPN tunnel acted as if they were in a branch office or a head office location. So the traffic carried through the connection is isolated from the rest of the internet and also is encrypted, giving it an extra layer of security. But today's workforce is outgrowing the traditional VPNs. So, you know, following the global events of the past few years, large numbers of employees now either partially or fully work remotely. So organizations must provide a reliable and secure means for large numbers of employees to work from anywhere. And add to this the location of data and programming files, which is now being moved to the cloud, and a separate challenge pops up. So these VPN tunnels, you know, they could not cope with the volume of workers accessing them. So many users decided to turn off VPN as, as it was hampering productivity. And with programs now residing on the cloud, the VPN could indeed be bypassed, which took away some of the security um, um, applications that were needed. So it does not make sense to backhaul all of their network traffic to a central corporate data center for inspection and policy enforcement. So that approach complicates the user experience because it required users to create a VPN connection for every single action. And it also increases the latency of the request by routing them to using the VPN to the data center before sending them onto the internet. 
So VPN itself, it's still a robust solution, but where it can fall down is performance. So if you can imagine a large number of remote workers, they can significantly affect the VPN user experiencing experience by significantly slowing down the bandwidth. And the process in which the data travels with a VPN can include a lot of latency because the data has to reach the data center first before being approved and then being sent back to the user. So looking at the picture of um, SASE versus VPN after SASE or AS. So, you know, SASE is the answer to these new world challenges, allowing users to connect to company systems from any company approved device from any location. So SASE is a combination of services, which I will go through in the next slide. And each enterprise might deploy SASE differently to suit their workforce or their IT department or their security requirements. So there's not going to be any one size fits all when it comes to SASE implementation. But to improve the experience and productivity of home and branch office employees, they should be able to direct, sorry, connect directly to the cloud. And that requires placing security services somewhere on that direct path between the endpoints and the applications without having to reroute the traffic to a central site. So SASE itself, let's look at, take a look at what it combines. So SASE is, it's an umbrella term for many tools which can provide networking, security and access applications. And as I said on the previous slide, enterprises will deploy SASE differently, with some implementing some of the functions on the screen and some implementing many of the functions on the screen. But looking at the options which are open to enterprises when it comes to SASE, you've got firewall as a service, which is basically implementing a next generation firewall system. So that has the ability to do dynamic packet filtering, stateful inspection, NATing and VPN support. Or there is DNS security, which is a DNS filtering system. And this is where you can use the domain name system to block malicious websites, you know, and filter out harmful or inappropriate content, ensuring company data remains secure and allows companies to have control over what their employees can access while on company managed networks. A third one um, is Secure Web Gateway. This uh, is basically intermediates between users and the internet, making sure that malicious software is blocked. Then we have Cloud Access Security Broker, CASB. And again, this sits in between the cloud application users and the cloud services by monitoring user activity and blocking threats. Then we come to a very popular and well-known term called ZTNA or Zero Trust Network Access. And this is a really important way of accessing the system or the company um, applications because it makes sure that the users only have access to the network resources that they need to accomplish their task by verifying the identity, the context, and the policy adherence of the requester before allowing access but it also prohibits lateral movement elsewhere in the network. So it's this one way of accessing what you need, and then you're not considered trustworthy to act, access anything else. So it's you must begin access credentials for every single different application you want to do. SD1, SD1 stands for Software Defined Wide Area Network, and it describes a virtual network architecture architecture, which allows enterprises to leverage any combination of transport services for their employees. And that could be MPLS, or it could be LTE, or even 5G. Then we have remote browser isolation. And this defends against ransomware, malware, and phishing attacks that target browsers. So users are allowed to access uncategorized and potentially risky websites but pages from those sites are executed and rendered in a remote, secure, disposable container away from the corporate systems. So in a safe area where damage can be limited if it, if it gets through. Then second to last is data loss prevention. This monitors and analyzes web, application, and email traffic 
again, to prevent sensitive content from leaving the organization. And then finally, sandbox, sandboxing. So this allows the actions of suspicious files and malware to be observed and analyzed again in an isolated space. So these are the terms that Gartner has put around the whole SASE solution and define them as the umbrella terms that should be used when deploying SASE. So looking at the market news out there, and what we're seeing is these are just some of the press announcements that are showing mobile operators offering enterprises SASE as a managed service. So, you know, on screen are just three of these, which I've come across recently. Um, on the left, we can see BT offering VMware SASE as a managed service. Uh, in the middle, AT&T is launching SASE with Cisco. A, it says a converged network and security management solution that connects and protects enterprises with software-defined wide area networking, as in SD-WAN technology, as well as security capabilities. And then thirdly, on the right-hand side, Orange, who have partnered with Fortinet to also offer a SASE enterprise service. So SASE, which will be deployed within enterprise uh, companies, but it will be rolled out, it looks like, by many service providers, um, which we know today as being mobile operators. So moving on, one important aspect not to be overlooked is user experience and bandwidth. And this is where we want to emphasize the performance testing requirements when it comes to SASE deployment. So SASE implementations, they should not only provide secure access to applications and data, but they should also deliver a seamless user experience. Now, organizations may be missing the importance of user experience and failing to prioritize it in their SASE implementations. But you know, SASE is designed to provide secure and seamless access to resources for users, regardless of their location. However, the organizations also need to consider the user experience when implementing SASE to ensure that users have a positive experience and are able to access these resources quickly and easily. It's really about getting the balance correct, having enough security mechanisms in place to keep the users, the company and the data secure, but also not having too many there. That means that the user performance will degrade, which will cause perform or overall company performance to go down and users to be frustrated. So SASE implementation requires adequate bandwidth to support the various security and networking services that are delivered through the cloud. And organizations should assess the, their bandwidth requirements to ensure that they have sufficient capacity to support their SASE implementation. And in our recent experience and surveys, we've seen that when it comes to security testing, that 80% of security testing is actually performance test of the users while only 20% is actual malware test. So performance test is really high on the IT manager's agenda. And it's not just our surveys and our words, but looking at uh, some external references out there, there are some very important performance test references, which I wanna share with you, which I've come across and I think are really useful and ex explain the situation very well. So first of all, from the North American operator Verizon, They've written a white paper called The Right Approach to SASE. And in reading this white paper, there was one particular paragraph that jumped out at me. And it's this one, which I've called out onto the screen here, which says that, you know, it's a separate section called performance test. It says that given the complex multifunctional environment that will characterize SASE, the ability to conduct testing to make sure the system is properly integrated and performing at expected levels will be critical. And this requires the proper tools to conduct integration, performance, and stress test needed to ensure that functions have been deployed in the optimal order and in the most efficient configuration. So this is what we have been preaching, and it's nice to see you know, an actual operator talking in the same language who are going to be delivering SASE as a service. And then a couple of other quotes which I came across from different blogs, again, um, of interest, I think, here. So left to right, um, John Spearman from BT Global, uh, he said in a blog recently that when I talk to CIOs, their key considerations 
are delivering business outcomes, protecting against cyber threats, and ensuring optimal network and application performance. So again, very high on the CIO's list of priorities. Then over on the right-hand side, I came across one from a blog by a guy called Jay Tilson, who's Director of Strategy at Access. And when he was looking for a ZTNA solution to replace VPN, one of his requirements on his list was making sure that the ZTNA solution they chose was resilient and redundant and offered the best user performance. So again, it's emphasizing that it's not just about security, but it's about making sure that the end user who is the employee working diligently day to day and accessing remotely has still got a great experience and if something goes wrong, that redundancy is built in to make sure that there's no downtime. And then the last one on this slide is just from the middle, again, from a Gartner report, which says that SASE vendors have used different approaches to inspecting encrypted traffic and enterprises need to test this functionality to determine its latency and throughput. And again, that refers back to a previous slide, which said that different enterprises will use different SASE vendors and even different elements of that SASE solution. So at the end of the day, it's down to the enterprise company to ensure that whatever they've chosen lives up to the SLA that's given, but also doesn't impact on their users. So that brings me on to um, you know, seven, what we call seven steps to a confident SASE launch. So prior to deploying SASE, we believe that it's crucial to conduct thorough testing to ensure the solution functions as expected and meets the organization's requirements. And here are seven key areas that we believe should be performed. So performance testing, number one. So this is where you need to assess the performance of the SASE solution under different network conditions. So measure metrics such as throughput, latency, jitter, packet loss, to ensure that they meet the organization's performance requirements, and then test the solution with varying traffic loads, which can easily be done in a lab with simulated traffic scenarios. Number two, scalability testing. This is where you can determine the scalability of the SASE solution by testing its ability to handle increasing numbers of users and network traffic and addition of new sites. So evaluate the performance and stability of the solution when the network grows in size and ensure that it can effectively manage the increased demand very seamlessly. Then thirdly, security testing itself. So validate the effectiveness of security features and mechanisms within the SASE. You know, testing firewall capabilities, intrusion detection, prevention mechanisms, data loss prevention, secure web gateways and other security components. So these still need to be functionally tested and you can perform vulnerability assessments to identify potential security weaknesses and ensure compliance with regulatory requirements. Another very important step is number four, which is traffic routing and optimization test. So this is where you can evaluate the SASE solutions ability to optimize different types of traffic, such as voice, video and data. So test application aware routing and traffic prioritization mechanisms to ensure critical applications receive appropriate bandwidth and quality of service. Then number five, SLA. Again, service level agreements are very important for enterprise companies to make sure that what's been promised by the um, delivering or service organization are met. So if the SAS2 solution is provided by a third party vendor, then you can review and test SLAs to make sure they meet the organization's requirements and validate that the vendor can deliver the promised performance, ability and response time, which they've signed up to. Second last, number six, failover and redundancy testing. As I mentioned on the previous slide from our colleague in Axis, so this is where you need to verify the SASE solutions failover capabilities and its ability to provide seamless connectivity in the event of link failovers or network outages. So again, with testing in the lab, you can simulate network failures and then you can evaluate the solutions ability to provide seamless connectivity and failover to alternative paths 
as well as measure the time taken for traffic to reroute and services to be restored. And by performing this particular type of testing in a lab prior to launch means you're not going to have any long outages. You're not going to affect users while performing this type of testing. And then finally, identity and access management test. So again, test the identity and the access management functionalities of the SASE solution. Validate user authentication mechanisms, single sign-on capabilities, and integration with identity providers. So ensure that proper access controls and policies are enforced. So let's spend one or two slides on our solution, which is called TerraVM. And what we do is we have a full test suite of tools that sits on either um, x86 servers or can run anywhere in the cloud. And we provide scalable, shareable, and very fast speed of deployment testing. So we have a completely software-based SD1, firewall as a service, next generation firewall, secure gateway, ZTNA. In fact, all of the elements of the SASE umbrella we can test with our virtualized and containerized tool. We can run same features and interfaces on multiple platforms, whether it's in a data center or on public cloud or indeed on premises. And indeed, tool components can be deployed in a distributed and hybrid network as well with central control. So looking at a couple of use cases, just to give you a flavor of the types of testing that we would recommend. So here's a use case, which we refer to use case one, where Viavi or the Teravium product is emulating users, as you can see on the bottom of the screen here. So we can emulate remote workers who are accessing the public or private applications of the corporate network, um, and they're accessing them over remote access VPN tunnels. Then we can also simultaneously or separately, we can emulate roaming users who are out on their phones and accessing via different routes, HTTPS over secure web uh, software gateway. And indeed, we can also emulate unmanaged devices users. So these would be bring your own device where they're not actually um, managed by the um, IT department. So again, they would have a separate way of accessing the, uh, the corporate applications with a different authentication mechanism. So with these remote users and traffic profiles, we then test the SASE solution, which is in the middle here in the cloud. And again, Viavi or TerraVM emulates public, both public applications and private applications. So we can, we can source or route the traffic towards the applications which are being requested by the user. That could be Microsoft um, Office, or it could be um, SharePoint, or it could be many different types of applications, which we also emulate. So then what we're doing is we're testing the devices in the middle here. We're testing the SASE network, the SASE infrastructure, to ensure that it allows the correct users access the correct files. It also makes sure that authentication works. And it also, we can test, is there any latency or any bandwidth implications as we scale up these users at the bottom here and scale up the, the amount of applications that they're trying to um, access. And a second use case then is looking at zero trust network access. So again, this is where TerraVM emulates the web client and the web server at both ends of the cloud here. And we would generate traffic with the ZTNA proxy validating the HTTP sessions and forwarding the traffic over secure IPsec tunnels. And the ZTNA proxy then can be hosted on many different cloud applications, all of which suit the TerraVM tool, which can be hosted on like-minded uh, cloud platforms. And a third use case, which is all often useful for uh, IT managers to test is the voice quality. So if you are deploying an SD1, solution, which again can access um, or allow users access corporate files via different root routing, could be over uh, MPLS or LTE or 5G. And indeed the idea of SD-1 is it routes the correct, um, it routes the user over what it considers to be the best transport network for that particular application. So that can be tested again by Viavi. So we have TerraVM acting as the um, 
as the client and the server, we can generate voice calls and video calls across the SD1 uh, infrastructure. And then we can measure the resulting calls with MOS scores and latency and throughput to see if indeed the SD1 route routing adds any additional latency or can maintain the voice quality that's expected. So moving towards the end of today's present um, webinar, so what types of tests do vendors and uh, mobile operators or service providers need to run? Well, the biggest challenge is that SASE tends to be run in a highly distributed multi-cloud platform. So it makes sense to use a tool that's also virtualized and containerized and can run in a similar platform. Um, and able to run on multiple platforms, such as data centers, public cloud, private cloud, and even on-premise. Then you need to check, is network performance improved? So SASE should be making an improvement in network performance performance. So if you're deploying redundant high bandwidth circuits from each location to the internet while prioritizing mission critical applications, can you check is the performance actually better than it was prior? Is user experience better? So are you offering users consistent high quality experiencing experience when accessing applications on the internet? What about SD1 validation? You know, can you measure latency, bandwidth levels, quality of services of the traffic inside those SD1 tunnels? These are all important tests that, that, that users need to run to, to test their SD1 and SASE applications. And then latency sensitive applications such as collaboration or voice over IP or media streaming and video conferencing, these all demand a high performance, low jitter network that is reliable and scalable. So again, performance and scalability here are two very important tests where you're looking at MOS scores for voice and video. So for those of you who would like to get more information on what we have from our solution, we have two sources of material here. One is a white paper on SASE slash SD1 testing explained. And I've put the link in here to where that can be downloaded from. But secondly, we've got a video again, which is a very short video outlining the requirements and needs for running SASE test. And that link can be just copied and pasted into a browser, and then you can view that in your own level. So uh, these slides will be made available. But in the meantime, if you want to take a snapshot of both of these, you can go ahead and download the white paper and look at the video. And I'll leave that there for a moment while I ask Gloria to join me back on the call. And Gloria, I am at the end. So if we have any questions, um, I'm happy to take a couple. Well, I do have one question to field and hand off to you. Um, the question is, I've heard of SSE instead of SASE. Is there a difference? And if so, what is it? Okay. Yeah, that's a great point. And um, so there is another term, which is SSE, and it's almost identical to SASE without the A. And SSE, again, it's, it stands for um, um, basically Secure Service Edge. So it's the same as SASE without the A, which is access. And the only difference between SASE and SSE is that SSE doesn't include SD1. So it, but it does retain all of the other elements of SASE, such as CISP, firewall as service, secure web gateway, and zero trust network access functions. So I think it's just that there is options out there. As I said earlier, you can have SASE umbrella of full functionality, or you can pare it down. And some some organizations have seen the pairing down of SASE to exclude SD1 and thereby call it just SSE. So it's for companies who don't want to deploy the full SASE suite, but go with a subset. And in fact, SSE, as pointed out by the, um, by the uh, question, is indeed a, another Gartner defined term. So good question. And um, yeah, it's very similar to SASE, just avoiding the, uh, the access or the SD1 element. But thank you, Gloria. Uh, thank uh, you, Owen. Any, are there any other it. questions? I don't see any. Um, certainly, sometimes it takes a bit to digest the information and say, oh, gosh, I wish I had asked this question. Um, 
Owen, your email address is owen.odonnell, two N's and two L's, at theobviousolutions.com. So for our guests today, if you think of a question, Owen loves to chat with customers and share information with them. Make sure you're getting the information that you need to make the good business decisions in, and solutions in your organization for performance. Um, if there are no further questions, and I see none, we will conclude this session today. As you, I noted at the top of the hour when we began, this session was recorded. It takes a bit of time to process it, but you will get an email with a link to this session for review, as well as for sharing within your organizations or with colleagues in the industry. And we appreciate your taking time to join us today. We hope you have a great day and that this session met your expectations. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you, everyone, for attending.